Seeing as though it was Halloween recently, I decided to make my earth shattering comeback with a horror related video. Initially, I wasn't sure what to do it on, but then I realised that I'd spent most of my time on PS4 over the last couple of months playing two horror games, Friday the 13th and Dead by Daylight. As they're both of the same genre, I decided to make a video comparing them to see which was better. So I'm going to pit the two games against each other in five different categories. Immersion, characters and maps, online performance, balance and overall gameplay. The one which has the most wins at the end will be crowned winner of the very coveted prize of the game that I like better. I'm sure the developers are shivering with anticipation. Anyway, before I get to the categories, let me break down the basic gameplay of each. To be completely honest, I'm not sure I would have ever played either of these games had they not been free on PS Plus. Dead by Daylight was free in August and Friday the 13th was free last month. Both of the games entail the same basic concept. One person plays as the killer, the others play as the survivors. The aim of the killer is to kill the survivors and the aim of the survivors is to survive the killer. In Friday the 13th, the killer plays as Jason, obviously, and the survivors are camp counsellors or Tommy Jarvis, Matt Jarvis's long lost cousin. In Dead by Daylight, you can choose from a variety of killers, including the Trapper, the Wraith, the Hillbilly, the Nurse, the Shape, Michael Myers, the Nightmare, Freddy Krueger, the Huntress, the Spirit, the Pig, Amanda Young, the Hag, the Cannibal, the Clown, and the Doctor. There are also corresponding survivors from the killer's source material, like Detective Tap from Saw or Laurie Strode from Halloween. In Dead by Daylight, the survivors have to repair generators. There are seven generators scattered around the map and you have to repair five. When those generators are repaired, you have the chance to power up one of two escape doors and use it to escape and survive the game. Alternatively, if you're the last player alive and there have been more generators completed than there are people left, i.e. if two generators are completed, a hatch will open randomly somewhere on the map which the survivor can jump down and instantly escape. There isn't a time limit so the game will go on indefinitely if the survivor has not yet escaped and he or she has not yet been killed. In Friday the 13th the options of escape are more diverse. You can escape via car, via boat, by calling the police, or simply by surviving long enough. Unlike Dead by Daylight, there's a time limit, 15 minutes, and if you can invade Jason for enough time, you'll win. When it comes to horror games, there really is no aspect more important than immersion. I mean, that's surely what you want. You want to be sucked in. You want to be scared. You want to be immersed. In truth, it's hard to speak about immersion in isolation. There's obviously overlap here with some of the categories I've already mentioned, like overall gameplay or balance. And when I talk about what each game does to increase or decrease immersion, it'll usually be a description of one of the other facets of the game succeeding or failing. Both games, while aiming predominantly to be atmospheric horrors, do differ slightly in what they're trying to achieve. In Friday the 13th, you can fight back. In Dead by Daylight, you can't. I think this gives Friday the 13th a slight tendency towards the survival horror genre, which Dead by Daylight lacks entirely. I'm not sure that either style by itself is more or less immersive. However, in line with many recent horror successes like Amnesia The Dark Descent, Alien Isolation or Layers of Fear, I do think that Dead by Daylight increases immersion by making you unable to hurt the killer. It provides a greater sense of helplessness, fear and, by extension, immersion. While the inclusion of the fighting mechanic doesn't specifically reduce immersion in Friday the 13th, it does give Dead by Daylight an added immersive dimension. In Friday the 13th, the setting is actually quite immersive though. You do, for the most part, feel as though you're a camp counsellor escaping from the killer. But, unfortunately, there are other elements of the game which do the opposite. One aspect of Friday the 13th which was particularly jarring for me was the character's dialogue. The voice acting is really corny. Oh god, what am I gonna do? I know it's a hallmark of slasher movies, but it just acted as a stark reminder that I was playing as a character, not playing through one, if that makes sense. That problem doesn't really exist in Dead by Daylight. Your characters are completely silent, bar their moans, groans and screams, so you don't have any moments where you're really made aware that you're actually playing as someone else. Although I'm playing as Claudette in Dead by Daylight, I feel like I am her in that world, not just pulling her strings, which often feels like the case in Friday the 13th. For both games though, I think the greatest threat to the player's immersion is when you're confronted by the killer. In Dead by Daylight, the chases can be a little comical at times. When you're running in circles in the cornfield or repeatedly vaulting through windows, it can look a bit silly. However, the tension of these chases generally overpowers these feelings, for me at least, and doesn't really reduce immersion. I didn't really feel the same about the chases in Friday the 13th. Because you have a limited stamina bar, being chased by Jason is a really weird experience. 
You find yourself stopping not all that far down the road just because the stamina bar has run out. It contrasts completely with what someone in that situation would actually do. I can understand it when you're hurt, but the idea that you'd be forced to stop and catch your breath after running for 10 seconds with a killer on your fucking ass feels so ridiculous. When you combine that with the completely stupid teleport mechanic that Jason has, Jason become this really jarring mashup of stop start running and turning around because Jason Lee has fucking magic appeared in your lower rectum. In Dead by Daylight on the other hand, the chases do feel fairer and more intuitive. Killers are slightly delayed when they hit you and you receive an adrenaline boost when you're hit. It feels more organic and more akin to what someone's reaction might actually be in that situation. I think Friday the 13th feels more immersive when playing as Jason himself. The way he lumbers forward, swings and kills does feel very authentic. But the same can be said for the killers in Dead by Daylight. In fact, when combined with their first person view and the use of their different perks, it's really easy to become fully immersed in your role as killer, further established by the disgusting but weirdly satisfying mechanic of hanging survivors on hooks. Yeah, good bitch. That's right, I picked you up when you were getting through the window. So this category, I think, is pretty one-sided. Immersion has to go to Dead by Daylight, hands down. The characters and maps contest is pretty straightforward too. In Friday the 13th, you're always Jason, even though he has different forms. In Dead by Daylight, you have an array of really cool killers to choose from. In both, you can choose different survivors. But for some reason, in Friday the 13th, even though I pick a specific character, it never actually lets me be them when I spawn. On top of that, you only have the option to choose your preference for who you want to be, killer or survivor, which is really odd. You aren't guaranteed to play as a survivor just because you said it's your preference. This is really problematic because loads of times the killer has left the game after about 30 seconds because they obviously wanted to be a survivor instead. Then of course the game ends. In Dead by Daylight, the characters are easy to select, customize and improve using perks, items, add-ons, whatever. Comparing both games maps is similar too. In Friday the 13th you're constantly just playing the camp setting. In Dead by Daylight, although many maps can seem pretty similar, there can be big differences. Larry's Memorial Institute or the Gideon Meat Factory from Saw are quite different from Auto Haven Records or Cold Wind Farm. I think this one again goes to Dead by Daylight pretty easily. Both of these games have been criticised for their online performance, and rightly so. They both definitely have some shit issues. In Dead by Daylight, the invite and party system is a healthy slice of anus pie. You can't just add someone to your party from the home screen, nor are they automatically invited just because they're in your PSN party like many other games do. Instead, every single time you want to play with someone, you have to specifically select survive with friends, invite them, wait, ready up together, search for a game together, then ready up and wait in the lobby again. And if, as is quite common, the killer leaves and the game is cancelled, they can't just stay in your party, you have to do it again. And when you do join a game together successfully and you play the full match, guess what you have to do every single time? Yep, go back to the home screen, set up the party again, invite again. After every single game, it's complete bollocks. Server wise I haven't had huge problems but serious lag isn't actually that uncommon either. It doesn't happen every time I play or even super regularly but enough that it's annoying. You might think with those problems that Friday the 13th has this section in the bag, surely. But no, Friday the 13th has connectivity problems that are even worse. The party system is just as annoying when your invites actually work that is. And when they finally do work, you're treated to the bonus game the developers are really kind enough to include. The let's wait 70,000 fucking years to join a match simulator 2018 game. Fucking hell, it takes so long. Then when you finally do join a game, there's several more minutes of waiting for the game to actually start. Imagine you do all that, finally get in, and then 30 seconds later the killer decides to leave. Yeah, it's pretty fucking annoying. So as shitty as Dead by Daylight's party system is, it's still the winner here. Balance is so crucial for both of these games, but I have no doubt that it was also the biggest challenge for the developers. It's so critical that, a few years after its release, the Dead by Daylight developers are still releasing updates with so many tweaks to the gameplay flow and overall balance of the game. For the most part, I think they did about as well as they could have. It must be extremely difficult to create a game where the survivors outnumber the killer, and you're trying to make sure it feels fair and enjoyable for everyone. But Behaviour Interactive did that with Dead by Daylight. 
Escaping feels fair and within your reach as a survivor. Not killing everyone usually feels like your fault as the killer. I think 4 vs 1 is definitely the right number too. There are few enough survivors that you become acquainted with everyone over the course of the match, making you more likely to cooperate and feel responsible for their survival too. Although escaping is the goal, it doesn't trump being an overall team player. You won't lose a notch in your online rank for example if you've saved others and worked on generators, even if you're ultimately killed. The worst thing you can do to another person person is, if you're being chased, leading the killer to someone else so that they chase them instead. And while it's a bit wankerish, it seems pretty realistic and kind of adds to the emotionality of the experience for me. In Friday the 13th, unfortunately, there's much greater opportunity to fuck over your teammates. As you can escape in a car, someone has to drive it. This often means that whoever's driving the car will run over other survivors just for fun, which is obviously really irritating as it does actually kill you. Adding to that, having 8 survivors instead of 4 means that you never really get to know any other players, and there's a definite diffusion of responsibility. Funnily enough, with more players present it's actually less likely that you'll be helped by someone, and more chance that someone will fuck you over. Friday the 13th's greatest balance problem though really is at the core of its gameplay. Jason is way too powerful, or at least his perks are. He has these senses where he can identify where people are and then magically somehow zoom forward and teleport once he sees someone. It's so deflating as a survivor to carefully sneak around the map for 10 minutes, then die instantly because Jason was able to teleport 400 yards up your ass and kill you with one hit. I can see why the mechanic was included, like Jason does walk pretty slowly and the map is pretty big, so playing as Jason you'd be pretty fucked if you didn't have some way of moving quickly. But it just feels like solving an imbalance with another, and as a whole it means you don't really feel satisfied as the killer or the survivor. Because of that, and although Dead by Daylight does have some minor balance problems. This one goes to Dead by Daylight pretty easily too. This category, while important, does feel a bit unfair to be honest. It feels unfair because the developer who made Friday the 13th has been hit with some bullshit lawsuit copyright thing, so they're not able to work in the game anymore. However, even if they were, I don't think they could match the excellence of the ongoing support that Behaviour Interactive are implementing with Dead by Daylight. There are massive amounts of tweaks to the gameplay all the time. Even more, when randomly checking the website to find a list of the killers, I noticed that there's still two more coming, one in December and one in March. For a game that's been on PS4 two and a half years, that's really cool. If you want to play as the killers you have to buy them, the newer ones that is, which is fair enough anyway in my opinion. The developers have obviously had to work pretty hard and put in a lot of time to creating new killers that would not affect the balance of the game, so being paid for that isn't unfair. However, if you just want to play as a survivor, it means you're getting access to new nemeses and maps completely free of charge, and like I said, that's really cool. So ongoing support goes to Dead by Daylight too. When it comes to overall gameplay, I think the battle is a little bit more complex. As a survivor in Dead by Daylight, what you're required to do is pretty basic. Pretty much all you ever do is repair generators, heal yourself or others, unhook yourself or others, or power the escape gates and leave. As a killer, you chase survivors, hook survivors, trap survivors, kill survivors. It's a premise that's simple on face value, but deceptively engaging and deep. Dead by Daylight reminds me a lot of Rocket League in that way. In Rocket League, basically all you do is try to drive the ball into the opponent's goal while stopping them from scoring in yours. But when a game takes a simple idea, perfects it, and then leaves the rest up to the players, it can yield some really intriguing results. And that's what happens in Dead by Daylight. When everyone is competent at the game's basic mechanics, and understands them correspondingly, it provides the perfect platform for strategic flexibility and tactical battles of wits. Once you have good teammates and are yourself relatively proficient, that's what every game of Dead by Daylight becomes, a tension filled battle of wits where you're constantly trying to outwit the killer if you're a survivor or entrap the survivors if you're the killer. For Friday the 13th the dynamic differs slightly. Because you can fight back and there are multiple methods of escape, the game feels less like a battle of wits and more like direct conflict. Most of my time as a survivor in Friday the 13th was spent searching everywhere for a battery or for fuel, but the interactions with the killer are a lot more fun than in Dead by Daylight. Hitting the killer with a baseball bat or surprising him with a shotgun blast to the face, just when he thinks he has you, is really satisfying. There were times when I'd plant a bear trap just inside the door, 
wait till he saw me and then pretend I was afraid and hide under the bed. Of course, as soon as he stepped in the trap, I'd jump out, mock him with a gesture and run off. The diversity of kill options in Friday the 13th trumps those in Dead by Daylight 2 I think. Smashing someone's head in the door or stabbing them in the face is a lot more satisfying than just repeatedly hooking someone and waiting for them to die. But I do think the games are trying two slightly different things so it's hard to compare their gameplay mechanics. Dead by Daylight is obviously more akin to an atmospheric horror, though Friday the 13th definitely does have plenty of that genre's elements. Friday the 13th, while losing some of that horror edge, ultimately has gameplay that feels a bit more liberated and fun. For that reason, I have to give the overall gameplay to Friday the 13th. While Dead by Daylight arguably has gameplay that is more conducive to an overall more atmospheric and scary experience, I think Friday the 13th probably has the better overall gameplay. Nah, wait, fuck this. Okay, I originally wrote this section and then went back to Friday the 13th to get some gameplay footage. Although it has more diversity in its gameplay, it's such a fucking chore to play. The shitty stamina bar and Jason's bullshit completely dumps all over any advantage of having more complex gameplay. It's still fucking boring to play because of the imbalance. So, unfortunately, I take this mini trophy out of Friday the 13th's hands and give it to Dead by Daylight. Okay, so overall, we have wins for Dead by Daylight in immersion, characters and maps, online performance, balance, and overall gameplay. We have wins for Friday the 13th in... Honestly, that seems fitting. Dead by Daylight really is better in every single way. If you're stuck between buying one or the other, go for Dead by Daylight. So there we have it. Dead by Daylight is a comprehensive winner. And actually a game that I've been loving, competition aside. If you get a chance, check it out.